For instance, I had a, I had a patient years ago who uh, was attending one of our programs, and he, he had very poorly controlled diabetes, and he developed a, a boil right in the middle of his back. And you could, you could barely see the point of the boil, but you could see it was very hard, and his back, the, the red area, was about this big on his back. So you could tell it was a very deep uh, boil, and it was very painful. He couldn't lay down, he couldn't rest. And so, so I, developed, I basically took, a, took some extra virgin olive oil, poured it on a, a folded over paper towel. It's very, very simple something that we have in our kitchen. And I just poured about just, a, just enough oil so that I could mix about half a teaspoon or, or so of activated charcoal into that. And the olive oil is so that the powder is basically becomes sticky and doesn't just go poof everywhere. So it, it holds the, the charcoal together. And then you just fold the the uh, paper towel over on top of the charcoal and make a little square like this and just put it right over the, the boil or the, the area of concern. Tape that on with some surgical tape or something that won't rip hair out or, or rip the skin and then just leave it there overnight. The next day when this gentleman came back that that boil had been completely drawn right out. And the red area around the boil was now uh, less than a dime size. Now, if he would have gone on that best antibiotics we had available, that wouldn't have happened for days. And he would have still been in pain, and the boil and the, and the, the contents of, of the pus and everything would have still been in there. So charcoal literally draws it right out. In fact, when you, when you take the bandage out, you'll see all the pus on the bandage, it just sucks it right out. Very, very effective, natural, or in this case, simple remedy available to us. Um, you can do that, like say, with any, any kind of bites, um, and, and there's many, many uses of that. So, uh, any questions about charcoal? How often do you take it? How often do you drink it? Just well, okay, the, the, uh, basically it's available to be used as needed. Uh, but it's also an effective way to improve detoxification. So I try to remember to take it once a week. It's not a hard and fast rule for me, but when I do that, I can tell that it's benefiting me in, in helping just remove toxins from the system. If you have inflammation somewhere, if something's real puffy and you don't know why, you can actually put a poultice on it, it'll draw the inflammation right through the tissue. Oh, there's, there's a quick story that actually Dr. Agatha Thrash told. And I'd been asking her, I said, I don't understand, why can it draw toxins but not nutrients? I mean, how can black dust or charcoal, you know, distinguish between a toxin and a nutrient? It didn't make sense to me. And she very, very humbly said, well, Wes, says, um, Charcoal actually isn't just an absorbent material. It operates on electromagnetic principles. That sounded a little bit mystical, you know. <laughs> but in fact, that's what it does. It will draw toxins because they have a specific electromagnetic frequency. So if, if, if the frequency of that substance falls within a certain range, it will draw those things into the crevices. If it's in the, in the food or nutrient frequency, it won't draw it. Now this raises some really interesting uh, and challenging questions for us, is that what we put into our body actually has a specific frequency. And the, the, the frequency of the food can actually help heal disease or it can promote disease. And so, and I know that sounds a little bit out there, okay, but bear with me because this is actually physics of food, this is the physics of healing. And, uh, and there's a lot of good studies out there that are a lot more technical than, than, than I can fully understand. 
but there, there we'll be learning more and more about the electromagnetic quality of wellness as, as we, as we uh, study this and learn more over, over the years and coming decades. So, so be prepared for that. It's not hocus pocus, this is actual science. She, uh, so Dr. Thrash said there was a patient uh, who, um, actually in this case it was a student of hers who was a physician working in a hospital um, after training under Agatha Thrash. And there was a patient who had uh, developed liver toxicity. And his liver enzymes, which is a sign of cell death in the liver, had gone way up. It was like 3,000. His liver was dying. And if he didn't get a transplant in the next 24 hours, he was going to die. That was, and, and all the, the bells and whistles had come in, all the machines that, that they could possibly use to treat this person, that, all the therapies had been addressed. And so they were just basically, well, we can't get a transplant, so this patient's going to die. Well, uh, this young uh, physician in training who had studied under Dr. Thrash, he, he had hesitated to bring up charcoal as a potential treatment for this patient because, you know, his attendees would probably say, you're crazy, you know, this, you know we, we do, we've got all these medicines, high-tech medicines and procedures available to us, all that has failed, how could charcoal possibly do anything? Well, they had already they essentially given up on the patient, so he said, says, you know, I, I heard a physician who had good results by using charcoal. They looked at him, but then they thought, you know, we've got to try something. So they gave him a tablespoon, the equivalent of a tablespoon of activated charcoal every half hour in cold water. And then they also made a large poultice of charcoal and put it over his liver. Okay? So it sounds like, how could that possibly help? But Every hour or so, they were drawing blood to see what was going on internally. And his transaminase levels, these liver enzyme levels, started dropping significantly every hour. By the next day, his liver enzymes were completely normal. Okay, the charcoal had drawn those toxins out of the liver so that it could then heal itself. You see, for healing to take place, we need to do two things. Number one, we need to... We need to give the body the nutrients that it needs to initiate the healing process. And number two, we need to remove toxins that are interfering with the nutrients, that are interfering with the body's attempt to heal the body, to heal itself. So those are two critical concepts that maybe we can explore further at another time that we, that we need to address. So that's why uh, being on a, an eating plan of nutritional excellence that is very high in nutrients, it's nutrient dense, is a critical first step to detoxification and to healing. And then secondarily, what are the potential uh, factors in our lives that are creating toxicity? Certain environmental factors, the type of water we drink, or the type of food, or the type of fluid that we take in. All those factors can contribute to this equilibrium that oftentimes is out of balance in our lives.